Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Prasad Kutilam. Welcome back to my uh, first series on uh, uh, engineering chemistry of Visheshwaraya Technological University of the subject code 21 CHE 1222. This class is on uh, module 4 Green Chemistry and Alternate Energy Resources part 2 of uh, the Green Chemistry concept. Okay, so this particular class I'm covering the concepts like uh, various green chemical approaches like microwave synthesis, biocatalyzed reaction, phase transfer catalysis, supercritical conditions, solvent free reactions. All these classes are uh, available in my YouTube channel, My Inclusion. Please do subscribe and uh, support me. Now, microwave synthesis. Microwave synthesis, it is a form of uh, electron. Microwave is a form of electromagnetic energy which falls at the lower end of the electromagnetic spectrum between infrared and radio frequency. That means this particular uh, form of energy, it is not uh, that much strong uh, so that the chemicals will undergo degradation or uh, chemicals undergo any other uh, reaction, only heating occurs. There is no other uh, chemical uh, reaction which is uh, participating, it, it involves only uh, uh, heating, thermal energy or the, the heat energy is produced. Earlier days we used fire as the uh, form of uh, heat energy to do the synthesize, organic synthesis. Then it was replaced by Bunsen burner, uh, then also replaced by mantle, oil bath, hot plate which are uh, used but they are not the uniform uh, heating uh, not ha ha happening when we use uh, the mantle or oil bath uniform heat is not that much possible but it is possible with uh, microwave energy heating chemical for their reaction by microwave energy is generally referred to as microwave assisted organic synthesis okay the same microwave concept we use in our home uh, kitchen uh, the microwave uh, <coughs> oven uh, where uniform heating uh, is done on the food items so that we'll get uh, food items uh, heated up or uh, to heat it. <laughs> the advantages, uh, the difference between microwave energy and other forms of radiation is that microwave energy is a non-ionizing and therefore does not alter the molecular structure of the compound being heated. <laughs> that means it only provides uh, thermal activation, no other uh, unwanted chemical reactions it supports. Uh, then uh, the microwave synthesis it provides a clean synthesis with advantages like uniform heating, enhanced reaction rate, reduced the reaction time, higher yields are obtained, purity in the final product, and we have greater selectivity, low operating cost, the economic for synthesis of large number of organic molecules, the reduction in unwanted side uh, reactions are the benefits of when we use microwave assisted green synthesis. The second one that is biocatalyzed reactions. So biocatalyzed uh, reaction uh, uses biocatalyst, mainly the enzyme, to promote a chemical reaction. Enzymes are mainly used by the bio system to catalyze many reactions in the uh, bio system, biological system. They are efficient biocatalysts. Enzymes are efficient biocatalysts. Uh, they are present in every living organism to carry out a wide range of chemical reactions. They also find application as major important tool used in green chemistry. The biocatalyzed uh, reactions can be classified as oxidoreductases, which uh, catalyzes the oxidation reduction reactions. It can be called as transferases, which uh, transfer a functional group. For example, methyl group is transferred from one molecule to the other. Hydrolases, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of various bonds. It can be lyases. Uh, cleave various bonds by means other than hydrolysis and oxidation. Isomerases, which catalyzes isomerization changes within a single molecule. So the, all these type of uh, different type of chemical reactions are possible by using enzymes or biocatalyst. Then last one, ligases, which join two molecules with the covalent bonds. You now, features of biocatalyst reaction is the catalyst that is an enzyme. It is derived from uh, renewable resources and it is a biocompatible, even it is edible also sometimes. They are biodegradable and essentially non hazardous. Uh, that is, it is fulfills the criteria of the green chemistry concept of sustainability uh, chemistry. The biocatalysis it avoids the use of uh, and the contamination of product by 
carry precious metals such as palladium platinum and rhodium so palladium platinum and rhodium they are used as a catalyst in uh, many organic synthesis they are very costly uh, rare metals their use can be avoided by using biocatalysis reactions are performed in an environmental compatible solvent like water and mild conditions are required like lower ph and ambient temperature and pressure Uh, reactions of multifunctional molecules uh, will proceed uh, with highly activities chemo regio and stereo selectivity is obtained and generally without the need for functional group activation or protection or deprotection steps uh, which is required in traditional organic synthesis the so biocatalyst reactions are economic and more efficient in energy and raw material consumption uh, generally which generate less waste and are therefore both environmentally and economically more attractive than conventional uh, routes of uh, synthesis of uh, organic compounds as a direct result of the higher selectivity and the milder reaction condition biocatalytic process often afford products in higher purity than traditional chemical or chemocatalytic process uh, because of the property of uh, the biocatalyst Uh, we have get, we are getting a product which is having high purity than uh, the product obtained by a chemical synthesis or catalytic uh, chemistry based catalyst like platinum palladium those catalysts are used compared to that better results so better purity is obtained by biocatalyst the enzymatic process uh, except the fermentation uh, can be conducted in a standard multi purpose batch reactor and hence do not require any extra investment for example high pressure or high pressure equipment are not required the biocatalytic reactions are conducted under roughly the same condition of temperature and pressure and hence it is relatively easy to integrate multiple reactions into co efficient catalytic process that means uh, almost all biocatalytic reaction uses the same temperature and pressure condition therefore many uh, different reactions at a time or it can be integrated together and it can be done therefore it, is, it will be more economically while uh, viable as well as efficient also in short biocatalyst fits very well with the principles of green chemistry and sustainability the third top what topic that is phase transfer catalytic reactions a phase transfer catalyst or ptc it is a catalyst that facilitate which improves the migration of a reactant from one phase into another phase where reaction occur sometimes in some chemical reaction we use uh, a sol uh, Uh, hydrophilic reagent as well as hydrophobic reagent together it means uh, there are two different phases are there. the reaction will be diff- uh, difficult to happen it needs uh, uh, stronger or critical or higher temperature or pressure conditions required whereas if we use a phase transfer catalyst reaction like uh, for the re- ionic reactants uh, which are ionic reactants are always soluble in aqueous phase that is water phase but insoluble in organic phase in the absence of a phase transfer catalyst a types of uh, phase transfer catalyst there are two types mainly quaternary ammonium salts and organic uh, phosphonium salts example for quaternary ammonium salts include benzyl triethyl ammonium chloride methyl tricaprel ammonium chloride methyl tributyl ammonium chloride and methyl trioctyl ammonium chloride and the organic uh, phosphonium salt uh, ptc include hexadecyl tributyl phosphonium bromide the ptc or phase transfer catalysis refers to the acceleration of the reaction upon the addition of a phase transfer catalyst for example uh, alkyl chloride or alkyl halides which is organic phase reacts with uh, sodium cyanide which is in aqueous phase this reaction can be done in presence of a phase transfer catalyst to get rcn which is organic and nacl which is aqueous since the product uh, one is in organic phase other one is aqueous phase separation is also easy without the presence of a phase transfer catalyst this reaction is not so easy because one is in aqueous media other one is in organic media uh, organic phase therefore the reaction can be done easily with this catalyst like the ptc and the product separation also very easy the cyanation of alkyl chloride which is a major way to produce nitriles rcn 
the alkyl chlorides are purely poorly soluble in aqueous cyanide solution and the sodium cyanide does not dissolve well in organic solvent in the presence of suitable phase transfer catalyst the rapid reaction ensures the product uh, production of alkyl nitrate and by the use of uh, ptc such as quaternary uh, phosphorium uh, cation uh, here the whatever the catalyst is the ptc it can be quaternary phosphonium cation cyanide ions are uh, freed that means it is uh, taken uh, from the aqueous phase into the organic phase upon completion of the reaction the organic phase which is often the pure product can be separated and the product can be subsequently purified or used in the further step as such before the advantages of ptc include elimination of organic solvents elimination of dangerous or inconvenient or expensive reactants high reactivity and the selectivity of the active species high yields and purity of the product simplicity of the procedure low investment cost low energy consumption and minimization of industrial waste now supercritical conditions of reaction mainly we use a supercritical carbon dioxide as a uh, that reaction condition uh, to speed up the reaction or to as per the green chemistry concept so a fluid uh, it is said to be supercritical when its temperature and pressure exceeds the temperature and pressure at the critical point we know a solid uh, upon uh, increasing the pressure or increasing the temperature it will be convert into liquid phase then to gaseous phase solid can be directly convert into gaseous phase there exists a triple point where the material uh, exhibit both solid liquid and gaseous behavior further on a uh, high temperature and pressure it convert into a super critical fluid mixture in which uh, yeah. it, it does not show any liquid behavior or gaseous behavior or both uh, are involved in that uh, so this particular uh, region we call it as super critical fluid now the super critical fluid uh, temperature and pressure condition of some common uh, solvents are given here like carbon dioxide temperature is around 304 degree sorry kelvin and pressure of 48.2 atm for ammonia for acetone for methanol ethanol and water it is given in case of water it is 647.3 and pressure is 34.7 in case of carbon dioxide you can see the temperature requirement is just 304.2 kelvin so this is a very useful information that carbon dioxide uh, the temperature and pressure condition for supercritical condition it can be used uh, as a supercritical uh, reaction condition supercritical uh, reactions the main reason for carrying out reaction in uh, supercritical fluids are the possibility to control the phase behavior using uh, pressure or and temperature uh, consequently the reagents or the product can be present in either one phase which is homogenization phase or two phases that is phase separation as required so we have better control whether we can do the reaction in a homogenized condition or even a, a heterogeneous condition also it can be a reaction which would otherwise be heterogeneous can be made homogeneous and therefore more rapid and effective uh, phase control uh, is obtained phase control is very important in polymerization reaction also some reactions such as the enzymatic reactions are very fast uh, homogeneous reaction free radical reaction which are controlled by the rate of diffusion of reagents towards each other uh, since the solvent properties in a uh, supercritical fluid medium can be changed smoothly and continuously by changing the pressure at constant temperature and uh, supercritical fluid can provide a medium for reaction mechanism studies so even to uh, understand uh, some of the reaction mechanisms uh, supercritical fluid condition can be used to study that the product control relative rate of uh, reaction step can be changed by controlling the diffusion position by density or in the critical uh, region this the course of the reaction and in some cases the ratio of the products obtained can be controlled so better product control is there when you use supercritical conditions now supercritical carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the most widely used gas for supercritical fluid studies because it is moderate critical constant uh, that means its the temperature and pressure conditions uh, to reach it to the supercritical uh, condition it is very lower moderate it has got uh, less toxicity or non toxicity and it is available in pure form 
Supercritical carbon dioxide because of its high solubility for uh, fluorinated compounds. It's a suitable medium for the replacement of prions, which are conveniently used as solvent for synthesis of uh, perfluoropolymers. That means uh, to obtain a uh, perfluoropolymer, usually what we use, we use a prions for uh, the uh, starting material of feedstock or the reaction uh, to support the reaction. These prions, uh, they are uh, Fluorofluorocarbons, you know, fluorofluorocarbons can deplete the ozone layer. So that can be replaced by uh, supercritical carbon dioxide because it can soluble in coordinated compounds. Supercritical carbon dioxide, it is miscible with the gases such as hydrogen. Therefore, heterogeneous reactions involving these gases may become homogeneous reactions in supercritical carbon dioxide. The super CO2, it is miscible with many gases. Therefore, uh, the reactant, if it is in gaseous state, uh, the reagent, it is in uh, uh, solid phase or liquid phase, uh, we can uh, make it uh, in a uniform uh, phase, uh, that is homogeneous phase can be prepared by using supercritical carbon dioxide. Now, the side reactions and byproduct formation in uh, supercritical carbon dioxide mediated reactions are rare because of its inertness towards uh, reactive compounds. It will not react with uh, other uh, chemicals, so therefore, there, are, there is no formation of a side product, only it acts as a medium of reaction. Owing to the high diffusion and low viscosity of supercritical carbon dioxide, organic reactions which include oxidation, reduction, carbonylation, radical uh, addition. Uh, carbon-carbon uh, coupling, uh, cycloaddition reactions. So they can be catalyzed by transition methods, can be successfully performed with equal or even better results than in conventional organic solvents. <coughs> Next important one that is solvent-free reaction or dry environment, dry reactions. So avoiding organic solvent during the reaction in organic synthesis leads to a clean, efficient and economical technology, which is called as the green technology. Uh, use of organic solvent is objectionable uh, from the standpoint of environmental hazardness. It is uh, that is why solvent free reaction conditions are an important object of uh, green chemistry. Because whenever possible, you have to avoid the use of uh, organic solvent because they just to act as a medium for the reaction and uh, some impurities will be added to the solvent, then further the solvent cannot be used as such, yet it has to be purified. So that is either the time wastage as well as the economic viability is not there, and it, it may be thrown to the environment causing uh, uh, pollution. Uh, example for the uh, techniques used are uh, mechanochemical mixing like grinding, microwave irradiation, solid mineral support to the reactants, catalysis by solid surfaces of inexpensive and recyclable minerals, example, alumina, silica, clay, adopted clay surfaces, etc. are example for solvent-free reactions. So there are many different methods uh, used, uh, technique used in which uh, solvents are not used. Advantages, uh, in a wide variety of industrially important compounds and uh, intermediates such as enons, uh, Emines, enamines, nitroalkanes have been prepared by this environmentally friendly solvent free approaches. They are very important intermediates. These are enones, enamines, enamines, nitroalkanes. It's very difficult to get this intermediate, but can be easily done with the solvent free reactions. In these reactions, the organic compounds are absorbed on the surface of inorganic oxides, such as alumina, silica, and clay, or dog the supports. Uh, absorb microwaves, whereas the solid support does not absorb or restrict their transmission. The bulk temperature is relatively low in uh, such solvent-free reactions. All these uh, classes are available in my YouTube channel. My intuition of uh, this particular class, you have to usually read the topic because whatever given uh, the talk, given the that one that much explanation only I have. Uh, is available in my YouTube channel, my intuition. Please do subscribe my YouTube channel. Many more videos are uh, getting uploaded into my YouTube channel. Uh, once again, thank you very much for watching my video and have a nice day.